Hey, what's going on guys? Today I'm continuing the cinematographer series. We've been doing that lately on my channel and I'm talking a bit about post-production today and actually kind of how I've been incorporating the loop deck here into my post workflow. And to be honest, control surfaces haven't really interested me over the years because a lot of them just have buttons and my keyboard already has buttons. So I don't really see the point of all control surfaces, but there's a couple cool options that the loop deck actually does. And I've been using it a lot lately and actually really enjoying it for color correction mainly. I'll be talking a bit about that, how you go full screen and the dials and it has this whole screen here which is really useful, but we'll get into that. Uh, but let's jump into it. But first, I wanted to show you my, my setup here. I got Lewis, I, I couldn't find my camera mic. Actually, I, I couldn't find it because I lent it out, so I'm gonna stop lending out my gear. But I got Lewis right now with, uh, how do you call this? What is it, this Schlepp's camera? Yeah, I have no idea. this microphone is worth more than my a7 III. It's like a $4,000 microphone, so I hope this sounds really good. It's pretty close to my mouth. I hope it's not peaking. But uh, yeah, a little ASMR. Yeah, you're welcome to Mark Bones, the YouTube channel. We're gonna be talking about post-production and color correction today, so let's get into things. All right, let's do this. of my cinematic series that I've been doing and I'm kind of jumping ahead into post-production. Gonna talk a little bit about um, some of my post workflow and what I do for color. And, and I've been impressed with the creative tool so far. It's super tiny, it's super small. I can throw this in my backpack. I've actually brought it home and worked on my laptop. I don't wanna talk about any products on this channel that I don't actually use and I don't actually think improve my workflow and hopefully your workflow or your creativity. And here's the thing, a lot of people complain about the price. And yeah, $550 or so is pricey, but here's the thing. When you think about the Apple trackpad, which I bought and returned, it's $200 alone. And all it does is allow you to move your mouse around the screen. Where the Loop Deck CT, you have to think of this almost as another screen. And why that is, is it has one really amazing feature called full screen mode. Because when you go to full screen mode on this, when you're in something like Adobe Premiere and you're color correcting, you still get all the functions of your color correction panels while you're full screen on your screen. So essentially, you can go full screen and still be color correcting and seeing everything. And, and why this is important is it's kind of silly. Whenever we go to color correction, we begin looking at these tiny, tiny little screens and we expect to be able to do really good work on a small screen and then we hit full screen and we play back and see if we like it and then we hit full screen out and then you go back in and you do your tweaks on this little screen and then you go back to full screen. But what's amazing with the Loop Deck CT is you go to full screen. This is why I love this. Not only that it's good for some color correction and editing, which I'll talk about later, but just being able to go to full screen and see, especially on my 5K monitor here, it's 36 inches. It's beautiful that I get to see the full image that I'm working on. That, that is probably to me the most important feature that you have on here. And then you get to use the dials and feel like a color pro with it. But let's jump into things. I'm just gonna give you guys a quick few tips off the top of kind of my color correction workflow and I'll talk a bit more about what I use the Loop Deck CT for. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys here just a couple of clips. This is from my film, Riscate. I uh, made this back in 2017. I cannot believe how time flies. Um, what's funny is I actually shot this whole thing on the 24 to 70. I, I now really only shoot on prime lenses, but back then when you're shooting a film that's about paramedics and all the craziness, I figured I needed a zoom lens because there was times that I needed to punch in and then punch out. And I think the 24 to 70 was actually the right choice. It was the old Canon one, like 15 years old. And man, it, it held up well. So anyways, I'm gonna jump in here into the frame and you know, just showing you, I wanna just do a quick edit. So I want to start here when he's getting the radio call. What's awesome right here on my loop deck, I can just go to ripple start. So I'm just going to click that and bam, there we go. I have the clip right where I wanted it. I'll just show you that again. I was saying I wanted to start the clip right here when he's getting the radio call. And now I'm just going to hit ripple start and we're right there. And that's the nice thing is I have all these tools right here in the loop deck. So for me, I'm not trying to remember my hotkeys that I would have on my keyboard. I'm just looking right here because it tells me everything. And what's cool too is I can just swipe to the side and I have all these other pages and I actually customized these pages. I'll actually open up the loop deck control surface here. There we go, it's all initiating. Um, and I'm in this workspace and so I actually customized these pad, I made my own page here and I customized these buttons. I have my favorite thing, which is paste attributes, creating text, because I'm constantly typing stuff for my YouTube videos, and then lock all video. 
this is really important too because I find sometimes I need to bring a video channel up to throw something beneath it or I need to just only work on the video channel and still have the audio there. Really helpful. And before I jump in, I, I find it funny when people talk about cinematic post workflow, they tell you just to crop 235, throw on their LUT that they're selling, and then add some film grain, and that's going to change everything. And yeah, yeah, I crop my footage too, and I add a lot of grain to my footage, but if you don't start with what you're shooting making that cinematic, then doing all these things in the end and throwing all sorts of LUTs will not help your footage or your story. I think the biggest thing that people miss is getting wide establishing shots and then a series of tights that help tell the story, where most people stay in the tight world. So you can see here in this footage, I do have a bunch of tighter shots here, you can see, but I also have wide shots, which are really important as well. Wide shots establish the whole space. You look at any feature film, they go wide and they show you more of the set. So use a cinematographer and use an editor. Look for wide shots. They are some of the most cinematic footage that you can add in. So I'm gonna do just a quick color correction here. I'm gonna jump, uh, I'm gonna use my zoom here to just to pull in. And then I'm gonna hit just this button here and I'm already in the color correcting space. And for me, skin tones are important. You gotta look at your Lumetri scopes here and you gotta see that this line right here, that is kind of like human blood. That's what they say is the color of blood and everyone has the same color blood. If you don't, you should probably get that checked out. That's skin tones, and I'm gonna talk another video eventually about trying to get skin tones along that line. But I'm gonna more so talk about the feel of color correcting right now and what I do. So the first thing I always do is add contrast, and I can just work right on my dial here. And what's great is if I don't like what I've done, I can just press the middle button here to reset it. I'm just gonna come back in. I'm gonna drop the blacks a bit. Um, I'm already liking the vibe of the scene here. Let me see what the exposure is. When you're working on DSLR footage or mirrorless footage, when you're over bright, when your footage is very bright, it begins looking cheap. It begins looking like you don't have much dynamic range on your sensor, and that's when it starts looking less cinematic. So for me, I like to darken my images a lot. I don't care about what it's coming out on the vector scope or on the waveform. For me, it's a feel, it's a vibe, and so that's where I'm gonna go with this. And what you can do with the Loop Deck 2 is you can actually uh, swipe up and down on these side panels, and you can have more here. So if I want to add vibrance in, which I wouldn't recommend, uh, I might dial it back here a bit. Um, you can just swipe up and down on the sides here and you can actually customize all this too. And as mentioned, the full screen on this is a really cool option. I'm gonna try and do a full screen cap of my screen here. It's a 5K monitor, so I don't know if my poor little laptop can handle it. But uh, just jumping into color correction here, this is what I'm saying why this tool is so helpful. As I go to full screen, and now I can actually color correct what I wanted to do. First, I'm gonna come in here, paste attributes from what I was just doing. So I can tell you right now, I feel like I need to kind of warm the shot up and maybe increase the exposure. I'm gonna come back here, go full screen, and this is the best part. I have my full monitor now, and I'm gonna begin tweaking things. Let's add some more uh, exposure into his shadows there. Where's the shadows? Change the tint a bit here. This is cool too. I can just flip this up and I have my tint. That's fine. There was a bit too much pink in there. So adding a bit more green. I can desaturate this a bit. It's maybe a bit too much saturation. Just dialing it back. This is the best part is I, I haven't had to go look at the panels. I'm just full screen right now and I'm working on everything. I can flip back here. You can see I have my tint. I can come back to exposure and adjust that. Well, too much. Just dialing it back here a bit. I'm starting to see noise now because I'm on the full screen, so I know maybe I want to add some contrast back in to get rid of that. It's actually increasing it. I'm going to change the temp. Bring the saturation back down. I can adjust the exposure again, add some huge contrast there. I, I can do all these adjustments on a full screen. And like I've said before, that's probably the best feature of the Loop Deck CT that you can do full screen color corrections and you don't need a second monitor. What's so awesome about this is it saves me having another monitor. And what's really nice too is I can look exactly at what's happening in my footage. I can see if there is banding, if there's noise, if there's chromatic abrasion that I didn't notice when it was in this tiny little box. This is the way you really should be color correcting. And that's that's why I think this tool is so helpful. So I'm gonna show you some more color correction here. I'm just gonna go zoom in, and then I wanna show you my favorite tool of all, which is the paste attribute. So I've gone into my loop deck, like I said, and I customized this page because I use paste attributes so much. I, I often copy the 
settings I've done on one clip onto the next one. So I'm clicked here. I'm just gonna hit paste attributes. There it is. Enter. And man, wow, that looks great already. Look at that. That shot. This scene is actually in the film. So you can see how quickly I'm able to make these adjustments and color corrections. Again, I can just come back into my color page here and just begin changing all of the settings that I want, adding some more blacks into this. But actually, I would probably lift the blacks a little because if we move the shot here, we can see our character's face is really dark. So let me bring up the exposure a bit there and I'll bring the blacks back down just so it doesn't get banding. But there we go, and if I wanted to start nudging this clip, moving it to a different point, I can just dial it in here. Oh, I love these dials because when you move them, you feel the notch. So you know each time you're moving a notch, you're actually moving the video a frame and you can really get precise with your editing. Because I find when I'm using the mouse, I gotta zoom in to the point where when I move the clip over with the mouse, it's moving one frame at a time or I gotta take the snap off. But what's great is you're always able to quickly use this tool and then what's nice too is you don't actually ever have to touch your mouse because you have select clip here i can go to the next clip i can begin sliding it over i can go back to the other clip i can begin changing the front end of that i can trim it as well i can slip it as well here if i want the starting point to change once you get used to this you begin editing very efficiently and very accurately and also to the loop decks et you can kind of use it in any software i find it's really powerful here in lightroom what's really cool too is it knows which setting you're in so if i go to develop it's going to change the panel settings here so it intuitively knows where you're working it doesn't work great for the curves but it's really helpful for all your basic corrections here if you wanted to change the exposure oh and by the way i do a bit of food photography on the side uh, this is my friend's restaurant, which I shoot the food at night. Actually, I don't shoot it in the morning when the light is best, but uh, I like this loop deck now for color correction. I find it very quick. Food's easy to shoot because you don't have to argue with the person or get them to pose a certain way. You just get the chef to do a good job. There, this is with the lifted blacks. So I'm getting distracted here. I'm, I enjoy color correcting so much now that I have this. Changing the purples really blue actually that makes the plate look way better it makes the yellows pop anyways that's a bit of my workflow i'm just showing you guys quickly kind of what i do for this uh, and also too i'm doing a short film right now and it's my first time really getting into a multi-camera film where i have to match people's eye lines and match the takes and look at the script and really get into that i've assisted edited people who have done that when i used to work in imax movies but this is the first time that i'm in the controls and i've been finding the loop deck really helpful for when i'm trying to nudge a clip and get a really specific opening part of a clip rather than going in and clicking the mouse and then blading the tool and dragging it over, I find I can just quickly move a clip over to exactly where I need it, which has been super helpful. Overall, like I said, the loop deck is great. It's easy to travel with. It's expensive, but when you think about the price of how much you're paying for your keyboard and everything from Apple, it's actually not that bad because for me, it saves you the price of a second monitor. It allows you to do full screen color correction, which is amazing and kind of worth the price of admission. It's here on my desk at all times. I love being able to use it. Um, and let me know too, guys, leave a comment below for specific post workflow. There's so many areas I can go with this cinematic series and I'd be interested to in what you guys are saying, but I kind of want also to talk about the specific things I'm passionate about in post-production. Color correction, I'm definitely passionate about, but I wouldn't say I'm a pro, but I enjoy color correcting. I say the main thing is look at your contrast values and bring the exposure down because usually your footage is gonna be too bright if you've been using a stupid little screen on the back of your mirrorless camera. But I actually really need to get back to editing that short film like I was telling you about. So I'll see you guys on the next one and thanks for watching.